Hello there and welcome to the new Power BI uh, weekly challenge or the workout Wednesday that I am picking up where you have the Power BI challenges and this week or at least for me I am not following like week on week but whenever I find time I create uh, I attempt the exercise and then create the video for you so that you get crisp and concise details. And then wherever possible, I add some of my uh, inputs to it uh, so that along with this, if anything which I feel from my experience, I'll try to add that. So this week I am taking up the week 9 and uh, here is the week 9. So week 9 is all about forecasting and anomaly detection. So forecasting is comparatively very easy. Uh, if the data is in a proper structure like you have dates uh, or a time series data and uh, you want to plot it let's say sales over time revenue over time or headcount over time things like those then you can very easily enable the forecasting like it has been shown over here right which can give you the directionally right figure obviously it is forecasting it won't it will not be ever 100% accurate but some directional as to where this is going and then you have to you you know or companies or you know when you work with the environmental data like this greatly you always want to find out where is the uh, maximum uh, ups and downs like anomalies which is outside the range of average or the confidence area like in this case um, in within anomaly detection we are using the sensitivity of around 75 percent that you will see in the instructions so this is uh, this is something which is based on week 5 or i don't know week 7 challenge this challenge will look similar to power Bay week 7 challenge yes because great lakes data was used at that time so here you have week 7 yeah so this is where we have looked at each and every lake and uh, their respective um, I think uh, temperatures if I'm not wrong that's what it is so if I go to this you have values but this is all about temperature yeah so we are building up upon that so if you have not followed it still not an issue you can get the data model uh, by clicking it over here the links and everything is present uh, here in the description for this exercise also a quick information about um, you know all the videos that I'm keeping in the one single repository like a live Google sheet so this sheet link is also present in the description where I have my 200 videos listed uh, in the tab feature explainer the only uh, thing is you will be able to easily come here search any of the video and using the link present in the column B you can jump to that video directly so just so that you have a better experience searching my videos and then you have the exercises link as well so all of these exercises which I am picking up like till the week 8 again the video link is present and the exercise link is again present over here so that way um, proper document will help me as well as you whenever you know I or you need a specific video let's say I want to revisit some of my video or you want to you are searching any of the video then you will be able to find it okay coming back to this so what I'll do is go to the Great Lakes so here you have the requirement first thing is doing the transformation of the data we have already done in the week 7 now the second is the add a line chart that displays the average coverage by year forecasted out to the year 2030 okay so line chart all right here is your line chart okay and uh, I will just expand that little bit yeah keeping in mind like how it has been gone how it is present over there and then we have the values and uh, we have the year date now this year date what you are seeing is a transformation of year so what I have done before this exercise because I was attempting it before creating a video um, I have this year right and then I use the function the date function as you can see to convert this into a proper date otherwise the forecasting will not work it needs a proper time series data 
So you have the date, you have the great historical ice coverage year. We have to specify the year, the month and a day. So if you see year is basically this field, then one default first month and first date I have taken because it is an yearly data, it will always take like a, uh, for a different uh, lakes like Superior 1973, Michigan 1973. And similarly, again, for 97.4, you have a separate set, 75, 76. So, keeping in mind, like, you can do like this or any other date that you feel like uh, uh, is, is good for you. But 1st January, I think, is okay. Because what we need is just, you know, proper year information out of it. All right. So, we have this. And then, what I can do is I can add the year to it. So, now you see the year is added over here. Okay. And uh, we need to enable the forecasting. So forecast, for forecasting, we need to come over here, analytics pane. Um, and then we have something called as forecast. So if I enable the forecast, that's all you need to do. But you can still go in and you have options like units is point, years, days. So right now it is in points. So that's, that's also okay. You have forecasted length like 10, so going all the way from 2020 to 2030, okay. So showing like how the trend will be and in 2030, the forecast is uh, 275 uh, compared to 2020, which is 98, right. So that is something what forecast is showing. Then forecast length, you can increase or decrease, like how much you want to increase or how much you want to decrease. And then ignore the last, in case if you want to ignore the last value, seasonality. Again, some settings which is specific to the forecast point, you can add. Also, confidence interval is this gray area. So, you have 99% uh, confidence. I think it will grow up. So, I need to click on apply. And uh, you have something called a 75. So, someone who knows the statistics will know about that very well. So, I'll keep it default, right? So this forecast, you have even the forecast line, like what is the forecast line you want to show in case you want to show the forecast line. And so this is, sorry, this is what the forecast line is black. But let's say if you want to show in a different color, um, for example, maybe this one, then this is what it will come. Okay. So I'll keep it black. All right. And then you have confidence band. You have some styles like fill or line or none. Yeah, something you can experiment with. So just wanted to show you some of the properties that you will find it related to the forecast. Okay, so once you have this, if you go back, sorry, if you go back, this is, if I just expand this, come on. So this is what our forecast is, but what we need to also add an average or a sort of a trend line. So add a line chart that shows average coverage by year forecasted out to year 2030. This is done. Add a second line chart. So before adding a second line chart, I'll just add the trend line because that is something we have not added. And as simple as that, it's the same pane, add the trend line and you are done. You have some formatting which you can explore. All right, so we have this first chart. I can do is copy and paste. So if I just copy and paste, second chart is created, which is anomalies in average coverage by year. So average coverage by year is still the same, but we need to enable the anomalies. So I'll just reduce or reduce this, right? You have, you now have proper line with you like what is a line and uh, but now we need to enable the anomalies and if you see the anomalies it is in it, it is right presented over here so if you enable that the anomalies are enabled for you as you can see which is similar to this chart and then down there you have forecast out to here 75 percent sensitivity so sensitivity option is present here, which you can increase 75, click apply and you will find 
the sense to video over here and these are the point which is outside of band is highlighted as anomalies right so those again who are statistics students will be able to understand or those who understand you know about sensitivity and all will be able to understand what does what does mean formatting is totally up to you we have been loving the way the creativity and that's that's the best part like how you can be as creative as much answer the following question what is the projected ice coverage in 2030 and all so one thing which i have recollected is uh, let me just select we have value we have to take the average same is the case over here we have to take the average nothing much will change but it's just about uh, what 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 is being asked now the last thing is uh, you have this lake minimum coverage and maximum coverage table so what i'll choose is basically a table um we have lakes um we have value now from here we need to come to this and say minimum got minimum of value or minimum coverage again bring in this and say maximum you got maximum value right and then move it to this alignment but come on okay all right so you have these lakes for example airy 5.400 you have airy 5.400 so our value is correct i will probably bring this up also the best part is that uh, i can select and you will see the visualization will change by default the interaction is enabled okay so this is done the next thing is some analytical point now this is up to an individual or analyst to analyst like they want to view it holistically or go point by point my recommendation is either you go in depth into the data and cover the lowest point to the highest point and so on and so forth or you have a way to add the smart narrative creating your narrative not just one point but many points right so this you can add in your visualization bring it down and that i feel is like uh way much more it is automatically generated again picking up the mostly the same thing but the whole thing is average of value you we need to just make sure that it is properly named and all <laughs> otherwise average of we can change this to a maximum coverage like you can rename this come here i think there should be a name to rename the nation we yeah, are rename so you can rename this so that instead of average of value it should say probably average of coverage okay so not just one but this is what my recommendation is uh to add it again as an analyst because i am not going very much into in depth the data my whole point is to show you the analysis or how you will create it but if you go down if something does not make sense for example if this does not make sense just select this and delete it it's as simple as that and this changes based on what we are changing if you see this is changing so that's what mainly i wanted to show you how you can do that again last thing is formatting i leave it again up to you uh, the whole thing is you can use the text box to create something like great lakes ice coverage use the formatting present here and here for the font and the font color is present here you can come over here in properties uh sorry the effects you can change the background and all right so something very very specific to what we want to do leaving it up to you how do you want to do that um one last thing also i will show you related to the formatting is the how you will have this background right so for that what you can do is you can come over here in insert shape take the shape right this shape and move it to the back the way you will do it to the back is going into the view um selection right and move shape in the end and and you have the shape right the only thing is you need to format the shape 
शेप स्टाइल कलर मे बी दिस ओके सो दैट वे योर शेप इज कमिंग डू द सेम फॉर दिस मेक द अलाइनमेंट एंड योर रिपोर्ट इज वेराइटी सो लाइक विद इन फिफ्टीन मिनट्स वी हैव द रिपोर्ट रेडी एंड दैट्स मेनली वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू शो सेकेंड वन लास्ट थिंग बिफोर गोइंग इज दिस वॉट इज द प्रोजेक्टेड आइस कवरेज इन ट्वेंटी थर्टी is your 55.07 which lay contributed the most to anomalies so you need to select you have close to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 point less point 3 point even 4 point 1 point 3 point so airy lake is basically contributing to the most and that's your answer So thank you so much for being with me on this exercise I will meet you in the new exercise uh maybe next time whenever I'm ready